Hello and welcome to TrackVIA's webinar, Accelerating New Product Growth with, with Excelatrack, a TrackVIA application for innovation and product management. Our guest today is Mike Dalton. He's the Managing Director of Guided Innovation Group. We have a couple of housekeeping uh, elements to go over just quickly. You are in listen-only mode. Uh, please, if you have questions, submit them via the chat window and we'll try to follow up with those live at the end of the session. Uh, we will have some interaction too within the webinar, so feel free to use that chat window there as well. This webinar is being recorded and we will send you a follow-up email with uh, the recording within 48 hours. So with that, I'm gonna give it back over to uh, Taylor and let me stop my screen here. And uh, Taylor, I'll turn it over to you. Excellent, thanks Michelle. Uh, good afternoon or good morning, depend where, uh, depending on where you're tuning in from today. Um, as Michelle said, yes, we've got Mike Dalton of Guided Innovations joining us and, and uh, educating us all today. Um, small backgrounds uh, of Mike's, um, but he has 25 years of uh, management, marketing and, and technology background and then an additional 10 years uh, of consulting in a variety of industries. Um, so we're very excited to have you here today, Mike. Well, I'm excited excited to be here, Taylor. So thanks for, thanks for having me. Absolutely. And uh, just one second, I need to move the, the, uh, need to move the GoToWebinar screen out of my way here. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so so I'm I'm definitely really looking forward to to being able to to share some of the tools that we've created to help product managers and product developers in the, in the manufacturing industry. And when I say manufacturing industry, really our focus is anyone that's developing and selling physical products. Right? So that's uh, that that's where we uh, we tend to to play. And I've got a special offer for those that stay till the end of the webinar. I'm going to give everyone that sticks around, if if they want it, I'll give you a copy of my latest book, Unlocking Innovation Productivity. And uh, so I, I hope you'll stick around for that. And I just want to do a quick run through of our agenda. I'm going to start with some of the challenges that, that Excelatrack addresses. Uh, very brief overview of the solution itself. And then we'll show a live demo, which is, I think, what everybody wants to see anyway, see how it's actually uh, working in, uh, within the track via environment. And then we'll, we'll finish up with questions. Uh, now, to get started and kind of level set as to your situation, the folks in the, that, that are on the webinar, um, just do me a favor and, and answer this question in just a few words in the chat, if you can. And then, uh, and, and then uh, I'll... Uh, We'll we'll see what uh, what we get back from the chat. So if um, Michelle or if, if you or Taylor, if I'm not sure uh, how you guys are sharing that stuff, but uh, if you can kind of yeah. let me know what are the what are the challenges that folks are entering entering into the chat. Sure, Cam. And nothing's quite coming in yet. We've got a couple of people on the line here. Hopefully, they're seeing everything. Yeah, I think the first one that came in is um is well I think this is probably with like technology, but I'm I'm seeing that there is um adoption of new products. So getting people to to use it or or buy them would be my my guess here. Yeah, yeah. Well that's more than technology. That's true with all products for sure. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Any uh, any others coming in? Um, and the new one is um, problems with quality control. Um, sounds like like potentially like rework and um, yeah, rework and just errors that, and having to process returns. Okay, okay. So probably uh, as a result of of products not getting uh, maybe not making it through development uh, the way that they should. So. All right. Well, we'll keep rolling here, and, and oh, we got a couple the, more. Sorry, Mike. Employee yeah, resources, no uh, collaboration uh, tools, and um, cross-functional collaboration. 
and cross-functional collaboration. Great. Okay. Well, we're definitely going to address uh, all of those. And and really, the uh, the challenges that we sort of find when we when we look across a pretty large number of industries that uh, that I've worked in, um, kind of at the highest level, they really boil down to sort of three key things. And and the first one is why what I would say is doing better opportunities. Right? How do you find them? How do you prioritize them? Better execution. How do you get the most done with limited resources? Right? Which is, you know, that that an employee productivity, uh, but but uh, you know, it's also uh, it's also the way we use our resources. Right? So, and then being resilient. Right? How do you remain flexible without everything become a becoming a distraction? Because you know things are going to go wrong during a development process. They're, you're going to you're going to some of the things you thought originally are going to not end up being true. Uh, and how do you do all that and still avoid the, the fire drills? And and it really takes you know all of these things. Uh, to, it really takes information to be able to drive improvement in in any of these areas. And and without uh, the visibility into the right information. Improvements like this can really be like throwing darts blindfolded. Uh, so, and, and there's a couple of questions, right, that I, I like to throw out there, and and just uh, and see, you know, what what do folks think in terms of how many of these questions, uh, the questions that I've got here, could your team answer uh, without a lot of effort, right? Uh, so there's a, a a number of questions here. Uh, just have a look at them and and hit me in the chat just with a, a yes or a no, uh, and and let's see what folks are thinking in terms of you know whether these are questions that they could that they could answer without a lot of that folks in their organization could answer without a lot of effort, uh, and uh, and also how many different answers do you think you might get? Uh, so uh, what uh, what what kind of feedback are we getting? Again, kind of a it's sort of helpful to level set here. See a handful of yeses, uh, 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 more no's, and very different answers, or many different answers is <laughs> for the second part here. Yeah, many different. Yeah, and and, and so the uh, the the folks that, that were able to say yes, hey, good on you. Uh, that means you're in a pretty good position. Most organizations would uh, would not answer a lot of organizations would not answer yes and of course the data it, it's there somewhere in your organization and it's probably one of the myriad documents that people create or fill out as part of the development process and, and uh, but the problem is that data is a far cry from information and you know putting files in a sharepoint or a teams teams folder just it doesn't magically uh, it it doesn't magically make uh, transform that into into information, right? Because data is just not the same thing as as information. And it looks, uh, like, it looks like Ben from the chat says he uh, he'll run workshops to get those uh, questions answered from from his team members. Like sounds like get everyone in a room and um, yep get the collective answer. Yeah, and and some of that takes a lot of extra work, and and so you know, a lot oftentimes the answer will be how many or the, the answer to all of this is that you have to have some kind of a dashboard. You know, how many times have you heard that? Or some kinds, some kind of a business analytics solution, right? And that might be Power BI, ClickView, or my or my favorite Tableau. Uh, you know, in terms of the the just analytics uh, uh, tools, but. The, but I've done dozens of BI implementations, and there's always been a challenge, right? And that challenge is that someone has to feed the beast. And guess what? The beast only wants structured information, not a SharePoint folder full of document, Excel documents. Um, and especially if someone adds an extra column or a row and breaks everything, right? Um, and, and so BI ends up being more work for your product managers and your product developers uh, or like like Ben said, you have to pull together, you know, you pull people together into team meetings to answer these questions before a big strategy meeting for the organization. And I've seen companies spend weeks pulling that kind of data together. Um, and, and so, you know, that means your product managers and your developers who are already stressed and busy are 
having to do this extra work. And, and you know, by the way, if, if you haven't realized, you know, these folks, uh, they get tired of double work. And what happens if they go someplace else, right? Because, uh, you know, how hard are they to replace? Uh, hard and getting harder. I mean, those, those are really, uh, really valuable roles inside an organization. And everybody I work with these days is telling me, you know, how hard it is to just even find people. So you want to make sure that you're, you're not only using them effect, their, their, their efforts effectively, but also not, you know, you don't want to be giving them a lot of, uh, a, a lot of double work to be doing. And, and, you know, what is it they always say on Shark Tank, right? There has to be a better way. And so what if you're, what if uh, the work your teams did just automatically generated that information in the, in the background? And so, you know, I'm going to kind of give a, a super quick overview of our solution for doing just that. And it, it's no secret, right? We built Excelatrack using TrackVIA and we did that on purpose because you know, they have the state of the art performance and security that, that, that we felt was going to be necessary. Again, they manage hundreds of back end tools and programs that are, that are basically required to keep cloud apps running efficiently, right? It's the things that none of us ever think about, but, you know, uh, but, but uh, every time a version of some tool changes, right, they're keeping track of all that, taking care of all that. And with tens of thousands of enterprise level users, they're also on top of the security. And, and that means to, to us, it means we can let TrackVIA handle the infrastructure while we focus on building tools that help product teams generate more profitable growth out of their new product pipelines, right? So we, uh, it, it's basically, we get to do what we do best and, and TrackVIA does what they, they do best. They handle the backend infrastructure. Um, and, and a particular shout out here to the customer support team at TrackVIA who have just been fantastic to work with. So I. I definitely wanted to recognize those folks. And you, you may already know that customization and cloud-based tools are, are often at odds. Um, you know, good luck with customizing any of the cloud-based ERP systems that are out there. Uh, but when someone asks, can we customize? We try to answer yes. Um, and then we do that, instead of with customization, we do that with backend configurations uh, that, that each client can set as they as they need, and uh, and the ability to do that is another benefit, really, of building Excelatrack on on Track Via. And then we've structured the Excelatrack product into five distinct, but I'd I'd say related areas. First one is being is the whole area of discovery. How do you find the best opportunities? Second one is evaluate, making sure we have the right to win and that it's worth winning. Um, the, the next is execute, early learning and rapid development so we get more projects across the finish line. Drive, making sure that we deliver the promised sales. And then accelerate, bringing product lifecycle concepts uh, to your product portfolio. And so Excelatrack does a lot of really cool things, but this is a demo and not a training. So I'm going to try to stick to the highlights, uh, just given the, the time that we've, we've got. Uh, but we've got a quick poll here. So Michelle, if you can launch that, I'd like to ask you to kind of weigh in on the areas that maybe interest you most. Um, and, and we'll see what uh, we'll see what that looks like. So is hopefully everybody can see the, the poll. Yep, it looks like it's taken over the main screen here, Mike. Okay. I don't see it on my end, so I'll have okay. to <laughs> I'll have I'll to rely yeah, on we're, you guys. We're starting to get some some answers coming through. Just give a few minutes here. No problem. Getting some good responses. Great. Yeah, and and uh, you know, by the way, if you you can you can enter two. I, I should have mentioned this earlier. My apologies. Uh, enter two or three, if you could. Okay. We got results up here, Mike. Uh, it sounds like you can't see the poll results. Is that I correct? I cannot see. Well, let's see. Maybe I can. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can 
I can tell you the order. Yeah, I, I, I can't. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes. Visibility into priority is number one. Number two is making sure limited resources go to the best projects. Number three is tracking after launch. Then managing NPD and then finding better opportunities is in uh, fifth place, but all received answers. So somebody, okay. at least one person is interested in everything. Okay, well, I will, uh, I will try to, you said the second visibility, you said the second one was? The second one is uh, making sure limited resources go to the best resources. Projects. Great, okay. And I'm going to save that one for uh, for last, actually, because I think that's one of the best. To uh, and I'm not surprised it's high on the high on the list. Right. So great. Um, all right. So I got to. I'm going to have to stop showing my screen for a second here, and I've got to sort of move over to. Uh, and I'm going to move over to. Via, if you'd give me a second. And so sorry about this, but I've got to move a, a couple of things around some screens and turn off the presentation and so. We'll get there. Oh, good. No problem. Right. And uh, there we go. And then I got to choose. <laughs> <laughs> and let me choose the right screen to share at this point. Back to screen one. There we go. All right. And so hopefully you can see Excel Attract. You got gotcha. you. You got it there. All right. Great. And uh, let me just do one more thing, which is. Blow that up to full screen. There we go. So you should have a full screen view, right? All right. So, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna start with uh, with discover. Although I know that wasn't necessarily one of the highest, so I'm not gonna I'm gonna try to to just touch on that in a little bit of uh, a little bit less detail. But but the whole area of discovery is uh, getting visits done. And and, uh, and and getting folks out into the marketplace, finding unmet needs. Right? And we have a whole uh, setup with a, a calendar to do that. Right? We can view a calendar of all the visits that are scheduled, when those get, when those visits are scheduled. And you'll notice the red ones here still need to be debriefed. Uh, the visits need to be debriefed. But uh, I'm going to just uh, I'm really just going to focus on what's the uh, what's the outcome that's getting we're getting out of discovery and what we're getting is this view of of like what are the different opportunities the unmet needs and insights that we're finding and and do they fit our market and do they fit the technologies and capabilities that we have and then frequency right how how often are we seeing those those particular insights uh, so that so that people can uh, uh, we can make begin to make decisions on what kind of, of priority we should be putting on those on those visits, and and all of this data that you're seeing here comes out of the visits themselves, right? When the teams debrief the visit, uh, if they find new unmet needs, they are answering some questions that 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 create this map, and and this is sort of all automated so that. Nobody has to create this. It just it's the data that we're taking out of the visits themselves. Same thing in terms of how often they're showing up, right? Each visit, we're just mapping the data from the visits here so that people get to get to see them. So that's really the the value that we're getting out of this whole area of discovery is that when we then when we start to see that we've got something that's coming up a lot and that it's a fit over here in terms of our technologies and capabilities and the markets we're in, right? One, we can prioritize that, hey, we need to do more work in that area, but also we're getting people to think about it in terms of adding opportunities, right? So we want them to ultimately, the whole goal here is to, is to add an opportunity uh, that, and, and by opportunity, I mean a project, right? That, that they've thought about some solutions 
as to what, what a solution might look like and how our technology would fit that, with that to actually be able to, to launch a product in, in that area, right? So again, just a real quick, you know, kind of a kind of an overview of uh, of the discovery area, and then I'll and then I'll move on to uh, to evaluate. And if you've got any, I think I think Taylor mentioned this earlier, but if you've got any questions as we go, just again put them in the chat, and we'll try to try to answer uh, answer some of that. We've got the, one for uh, discover, Mike. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can you go back to that discover dashboard, please? You bet. It sounds like uh, one question is, what do the sizes of the bubbles? Uh, yeah, so great question. So, so there's really two things here, right? We're looking at how much of a how much it fits the technology, and and whether it fits our market. And then also at this stage, just the strategic impact. You're going to see this chart again in a different context, uh, but here it's just the strategic impact. And it's you know it's one of these things with it it's a, it's a guesstimate based from the team uh, which should include commercial and technical folks as to how big of an oppor opportunity it is for the organization how much of an impact can it have for the for the organization. Okay. Okay. So that could mean so, like that could mean number of new products that could mean a potential market size or a, ex a, exactly it's, it's strategically you know when you think about it strategically how big of is hey this is getting us into some new fast growing markets uh and and so it, it might be really big so you know here's one that is from a market stretch standpoint is is not much of a stretch and it's right within our technology sweet spot uh, you compare this one to up here. This is well. This is again. It's in our market, but it's it's a stretch. It's at the top end of in terms of a technology stretch, and they're the same size. So the orange one would definitely be an area we would uh, we we'd think about going after before we'd end up uh, before the other one, right? And and uh, and then that can even drive forward into we've got a whole prioritization module here, right? Where we've got each of the each of the unmet needs ranked, as you can see here, and then and then a tool for ranking them, right? For for a tool for force ranking those those opportunities uh, into into different uh, uh, different categories, so that uh, we can we can identify which ones really need to be the 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 organ which ones the organization should be focusing on at a at a strategic level, which ones are the best fit, right? And you know, some of these are are not yet ranked, right? So they, they'll need to be ranked, but that's what the tool is for, is to to be able to do that. Yep. So, all right, anything else, Taylor, or was that? Uh, yeah, that, that uh, there was two questions about the bubbles specifically. So I think great, uh, great. I, yeah, happy yeah. to. Uh, the the next uh, the next area I'm going to cover is is evaluate. Um, you know how do we how do we evaluate opportunities and make sure and this is part of resources too because they're actually it's part of making sure that the that the projects are really projects that we we should be going after and and, uh, and the first thing is we've got to create an opportunity right so we've got a a, a fairly straightforward interface uh, for doing that where where they can enter an opportunity name and then the, what I really wanted to show you on this chart. I, uh, again, a demo not not a training, so we're not going to go through and, and build these in the just given the time that we have. But but just wanted to show you that there's some project types here, like a new product development project, an applications engineering, technology, uh, cost reduction, value add, value engineering. Again, configurable for your organization. This could look completely different, uh, but th these are important because they help determine what uh, they help determine which uh, of the of the resources are going to be necessary. So, uh, or I'm sorry, which of the deliverables are going to be necessary, depending on the project type. And then you'll also notice here project resource size. And so, is it a small, medium, or large uh, project in terms of the amount of resources that it's going to take? I'll talk more about that again later as well. But uh, uh, and then. Some uh, just a brief description of the product and some additional information, including things like target launch date, 
uh, when you're going to be ready for the first gate review. But this is just sort of an initial information that uh, uh, that we're going to be pulling in. But uh, I'm going to just exit that flow. But again, we're we're using the flows inside of Tragvia to make this uh, much faster and easier to to build these. And then once we're uh, once we're up and running with an opportunity, got it in there. Then there are some different deliverables that are necessary uh, to uh, to be able to uh, uh, about to, to be able to evaluate whether it's a, a, a good opportunity or not. And I'm just going to want to show one of them here, which is the initial assessment. And the way the initial assessment works is the team answers. Uh, they're answering questions around intended market requirements and around technology and capabilities. And really, it's it's things like you know how good of a fit is this with customer behaviors, the markets and the brand promise. Uh, and then over on the technology side, uh, how does it compare to your current technology and, and even your fundamental scientific understanding? Right? So it's, it's really helping, under, it's helping identify how close or how far in those things are. Um, and, and then what we can, what we get then is a that same sort of evaluation, but on a on a more detailed level. We're also uh, we're also taking uh, uh, some of the forecast data and things like that, which I'll I'll cover in just a second. But you can see here, this is what we call the stretch view. And again, we've got technology and capability score, the intended market that we're in, and then what's the size of the now. This is the actual size of the opportunity, the three year. Uh, the the three year sales on the on the product. What's the uh, what's the size of the different opportunity uh, of the different opportunities? And so you can see here's one that's uh, a, a big fat juicy one that's uh, uh, low. It's right in your core market. It's not huge stretch on technology. I'd, I'd call it adjacent technology. So uh, it's probably one that uh, you're really want to going to want to prioritize and and go after as a as an organization, right? So, any any additional questions coming in, uh, Taylor? Um, none right now. I think uh, everyone is uh, soaking this in. I would like to just point out, um, you know, I think how you've obviously, if people don't know, this is built in Track Via, right? But um, Mike, I think you have such a unique approach here for this this dashboard that. Um, is like you know your home base this is where you start and your this one dashboard has been organized into the different stages of just like the mental and actual process that your company will go through here and then these links lead you to different dashboards or different flows and in the inputs and um, I think it's a really unique um, way you've laid this out but um, yeah, it's it's a re really impressive and a great use of a lot of the charts as well to to be able to uh, digest the information really easily. Well, thanks, Taylor. I, I appreciate that. And and you know the 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 advantage in this this whole area of evaluate is is that it it really gives management a way based on the work the teams are doing to compare projects with each other. And decide which one should get the resources, right? Because this is all the, the the resources. There's resources going in to evaluate, of course, but you know the big resources start and develop, and making sure that uh, that that again that it's that it's that it's worth doing that we can win at it, and that it's worth doing, and and that's what you know that's what that this assessment does. This is really looking at you know is it is it in the capability, you know, when you start getting too too much above 20 and outside of 20 on either one of these, it's getting to be more of a push uh, mm -hmm. in terms of our, our ability to do it. Like this, this is way out there, right? It's very hard to do and it's outside of our market. Good luck with that one, right? It, it uh, mm -hmm. Uh, if you're no, if you're Google and you've got billions and billions of dollars to throw at things, but most companies find that that by just pushing out into adjacent technologies and adjacent markets uh, and not e not necessarily at the same time that, that just into the adjacent outside of their core and into the adjacents that's about as much as they can do and that's a and, and that can drive a lot of innovation value 
in terms of being able to do that. So, you know, that's the that's the value of, of what we're doing here is as the projects are being set up and, and uh, organization uh, information's being collected, right? We're getting some of these pictures that the organization can can really look at. Um, so, uh, and then the other thing that comes out of this is automatically as each one of these projects is created, right? We're, we're building an infrastructure of deliverables. You have, most organizations have this anyway, right? You've got things like forecasts, you've got things like business cases, um, and a number of different documents that that end up being uh, being required, like maybe a manufacturing plan, a supply chain plan, not things that you necessarily want to build into your data structure, but you want to know that somebody's got that plan and that it's been reviewed. And, and so we've got that. Uh, and, and depending on the project type you choose and the, the phase in the project, then then different things are going to show up here and I, one of the things i want to point out on the dashboard here is that so if we're in the de in develop here you'll notice here in update forecast that there's a one here now if i'm looking at it it's a one if somebody else is looking at it it might be a zero it might be a five and this is the number of forecasts that are assigned to me that i need to update and that's another one of the the values that that The, the the flows that that Trackvia has that we've taken advantage of is it we're allow it, it allows us to give people a much better view into into the work that's necessary to keep things moving forward right because if this was a zero okay I don't need to update any forecast but since it isn't a zero it, it's a one I'll click on this update forecast and what's happened when we created that opportunity this forecast model this sort of blank forecast model got built in the background, right? And what we need to do then is go into this forecast and and modify a couple of things, right? We need to we need to enter what's the what's the volume, what's the price, what's the contribution margin, profit margin, uh, and that'll that'll calculate sales and and all those different things automatically, right? And and then this is sort of on on a year by year basis. Uh, you might also notice here that there's a year number zero. Uh, most organizations don't use that. We've got a client that does a fiscal forecast and and likes everything to start in January. In the so if there's a product that launches in September, then the that September to January is a year zero. Again, configurable. You don't use that. Doesn't even show up here. We take care of that in the back end when on the whole setup when the product is originally set up part of the value of that of that configuration right but but uh you know this is for the, a particular product and we can we can create that yearly forecast and then what's happening in the background here is that that's generating monthly forecast it's going to generate this whole monthly forecast which we're going to be able to use later uh, monthly is usually enough granularity you could go all the way to weekly i've never seen a reason to do it uh, in in, in all my years of doing this, but but monthly is pretty uh, gives you a pretty powerful uh, powerful view, and uh, and so again that's sort of automatically uh, uh, being tracked and set up inside a track via, and we've got some other things like like learning goals uh, that that we can set up for a for a project where the team is looking at. You know, from a market standpoint, from a technology standpoint, from a business model standpoint, what are the things they need to learn? Yeah, that that and what so what do they know to make? What are the key decisions they're going to be coming up? What do they need to know uh, to fill those decisions? And what do, and what do they know already? And what do they need to know? What are the gaps? And 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 so they can. This report is something that can be tracked as you as you go, and in course in track via these can all be printed out uh, if you if you want to carry them into a meeting that way. Although uh, you know I think people are getting more and more to where they'll they'll actually put this up on a screen in meetings and and use it as a as a document for the team to work through. So, but again, that's all part of the deliverables framework, and that's all part of of the gate review process because most companies have some kind of a stage gate development process right and you really want to know uh you you really want to be able to say am i ready for the gate 
gate review? Have I, have I, uh, do I have all of my documents and everything ready so that I can come over here and say, yeah, we're ready for a gate review. And then I can, I can propose that we're going to take this project to a different state. So we're going to take this to, uh, for instance, here, recommending the, the next phase uh, and uh, and move it forward. So that's kind of the the uh, uh, the capability that we have here to be able to to move things through the gate, move things through a gated process. And again, because of the configurability, that gated process can look looks like whatever it looks like inside of uh, inside of your organization. And uh, the the uh, so that's uh, that's a big part of what you see here. Well, and uh, the other thing I'll mention is that then when a team proposes something for a gate, uh, then when the manager pulls up a, the uh, the flow for gate review required, right? They sh they see all of the things that all the projects that are that have that are waiting review essentially, right? And need to have a, a stage gate review team, uh, and they can go in and approve it or conditionally approve it, deny it, whatever uh, whatever it might be in terms of uh, in terms of the answer that the stagegate team came up with. Usually the and usually the folks that are, almost always the folks that are part of that, you know, they they're they're presenting some of the some of the data. So they they know that, but we can move it forward in the in the system uh, and then it automatically advances it to whatever the next stage is. Which and by the way, you know, some projects can even skip stages, right? If you think about very simple projects, don't need the whole five or six stage gate model. They may only use two stages. Build all of that that can all be built in through the configurability. Right? It's not something you decide on a project by project basis when you choose the kind of project. Right? If it's a if it's an applications project, it might only take two stages. If it's a full blown R and D or NPD, it might take all six stages and that's all uh, that's all by in that early when you set the early point where i set up the project and I, we chose that that's all automated there uh to to deliver the to deliver the uh, the right view now the uh the next stage i want to just jump to here then is the whole area of drive um, and this is for us a a, a something that that uh, most organizations struggle with is how do you how do you know what the value coming out of your new products is and how do you know the the value that you're actually delivering right so we've got first off we've got a, a chart a view here with projected results and uh and here we can take a look at projected so this is revenue and margin by year uh for let's we're going to look here for that's for all projects this is for unlaunched this is just what's in dev so let's take a look at what's just in dev uh we can see we've got some some sales and margin coming out of uh 2022 uh, mm -hmm. a lot a lot more coming out in uh in 2024 2025 2026 that's just the things that are in development right now uh and and that's how do we do that Remember when we when we did those forecasts, which are part of the deliverables, we then took that data and and built it out so that we could so we could do this um, at at the actual year instead of just the year number uh, or even month or quarter, whatever uh, however you want to take a however you really want to take a look at it. Is that a complicated like data set in the back end, Mike? Like um, you know, is that take a lot of management to put that together or you know what's kind of it's, the background? you know the 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 setup all we really have to do is set up at the beginning what kind of a forecast you're doing uh and it's really just answering a couple of simple questions and then we've got code working in the background that just creates all of that so great question taylor yeah it, it uh it really makes it a lot easier to uh you don't have to think about okay so how do I drive that into a into a monthly or quarterly? Right, because here I've got the same view in quarterly. Yep. So how do I break that into quarter? Well, again, we've got it all the way down to monthly, and could even go weekly if we had to. But but again, monthly seems to be more than enough. 
right? And we can break it down into quarters and, and even months. Uh, and and that's, that's just the way we set it up uh, that, that when you do that years, year one, year two, year three, and then based on the launch date, it's a year, you know, year one is one is the year after launch. Year two is the second year after launch. And it just automatically uh, drives all of that. Awesome. So that, uh, so that you don't have to, you know, you, you're not constantly going in and, and believe me, I've seen people do this with Excel spreadsheets and, uh, and, and, I've seen some people do some pretty cool things with Excel spreadsheets. In fact, I myself have done some pretty cool things around this with Excel spreadsheets. And then you make a mistake or you change a line and, and the whole thing that, that was working a month ago doesn't work the way you wanted it to, right? Here, yeah. it's a stable backend data structure that prevents that, uh, that from happening. Yep. And always live, right? By the time you walk into a meeting, your data has not changed. Exactly, exactly. So now, so that's projected results. Well, what about actual results? Growth, the growth results that we've delivered, right? So here I've got performance versus forecast by year, right? And I can, so I can actually can compare and I can see, well, here we didn't actually hit our forecast here. A couple of years we beat it. Uh, again, here we missed it. And how are we doing this year? Well, we can use a little catching up. It's early in the year. Um, uh, that one's 2024, so I'm not sure why that's there. But anyway, uh, yeah, so 2022, we're still uh, still working on. Uh, and so that's performance versus forecast, uh, you know, to actually uh, actually be able to uh, to compare what we promised to what we're to what we're selling. And we can do that by month. We can. We can create a year to date, right? So you can see, are we doing? And then we can also filter that by by product types, by by uh, each individual product, so that uh, uh, so that we can uh, so so that you're able to uh, uh, you're really able to uh, drill down into it and see where where are the gaps where do we need to put the energy in terms of being able to deliver the deliver the the value that uh, that we've promised us as far as an organization so um the the last piece i'm just going to jump over here and and show and and this piece uh everything you see here is is uh, is live this last piece is is sort of our roadmap and i i just wanted to show that uh, that the and that's really the the whole accelerate how to how to apply some of the product lifecycle uh, concepts, uh, particularly 8020 concepts to to the to our to the database. Uh, that because we because when we get that sales data, and by the way that that sales data can come in either via a, uh, it, it can be a report that you get out of ERP or one of the nice things that that using track via does is it allows us to create these integrations so that data we can that data can be pulled out of uh, any or out of your ERP system or whatever whatever system you're using to, to record uh, record sales and uh, you know it depends on and that's oftentimes a discussion with IT in terms of what's the best way to do it but uh, but over here at the we've got the ability then also to take a look at you know from an 80 20 standpoint right a, B, and C customers, A, B, and C products based on you know the top 80% uh, of profits come from our A customers, uh, which are usually only about 20% of those customers. The next 15% comes from uh, the B customers, and and the C is the bottom 5% of, of profits. And so you know you can you can take a look and see here. Well, this is our C products sold at C customers, right? Why are we making those anymore? Maybe it's because they're brand new and they, they, right? So there's, it's, there might be a reason for them to be there, but uh, you know, you're, and you're putting a lot of effort on them. So you got to give them time, but it's having that, the value here is being able to have that conversation. Uh, you know, whereas my A products, A customers, I want to continue and drive those, right? Same thing with B products at A customers and A products at, at B. Uh, so there's a lot of different different things you can you can do here depending on you know in each one we're able to pull up a pull up a list of of what those products are so that uh, so that product management teams can can do the uh, 
do what they need to do uh, effectively. All right, and then I, I promised I was gonna show the, the whole resource area. And, and the reason uh, this is so important is because it, it, when organizations let too many projects into the organization and into execution, uh, they really end up with, uh, they can really end up with things taking far longer than they should. And so what we recommend is actually creating a backlog. And so you can see here that this is a ranking, but it's only the projects that are on our backlog. Right, and you see, uh, we've got so we've got seven projects on the backlog. Um, when I look at my resources, right, and so what we're actually doing is assigning resource quantities to every project. Remember that small, medium, large? That's assigning points to each project, and the organization only has so many points uh, that that it can really afford to move through development, or be that it's able to move through development at full speed. If we if we put more in, we slow everything down. If we run twice as many projects, which is not abnormal at all, if we run twice as many projects as we can run at 50%, I'm sorry, as we can run at full speed, we end up slowing everything down. Usually it takes about three times longer, not just twice as long, but three times because we create multitasking too. And, uh, and so what, if we look at it here, we can see we've got a bunch of projects on the backlog. Well, that's that's those projects. And we can also see that we really don't have, if we look at what's in our scheduled, our phase two, three, four, and five, we're kind of the, the area under the orange curve, so to speak. We're over in a couple of phases, under in these. On balance, we're just about, uh, we're, we're just about okay here. And that's a snapshot. That's a like, a snapshot for today. This is resource loading by month. You can see here that that it's really uh, uh, we're just under the under the total. We could maybe squeak a small project in, but uh, to put a big project in or too many big a few big projects in would would end us over. So how do we decide which project ought to go in next? Right. That's the other part of resource is prioritization. And there we can actually take, and, and so we've got value of the project divided by the engineering hours. One of the things that, that gets filled in when we do initially create the project uh, as we go. Uh, so dollars per engineering hour is a great, it really tells you, are you it's bang for buck, right? And, and, uh, and so this one's got a pretty high value. In fact, it, if I look across the other opportunities here, I could argue it's got the highest value. And so I might drag it to the number one spot. And, uh, and then what you'll notice then is the others all move across, they get re-ranked. Uh, and, 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 uh, or we might say, well, this, is, this one, we promised this to somebody, so it can't have the number one spot. It can only have the number two spot. And again, we've got that capability to, to automatically re-rank those using this interface. Um, and then, you know, from from a management standpoint, well, a couple things here. From a from a user standpoint, from the folks that are doing the work, right? If if your organization is using these tools, you know, you know that you're actually you actually have the time to do the work, do it right, uh, and not jump around and and feel like uh, you're in a fire drill all the time, right? If you're a manager, you know that. Well, if you're a, and if you're a product manager, you know you're able to know when your project is going to be uh, released to execution. And then you're also going to, uh, and if you're a, a, a resource manager, right, you're going to know when your people, when you have the capability to bring those other projects in, right? If you're running R&D, you're going to know, yeah, we can start that project on this date because you've got the, the data here to do that. Those are finally data-driven conversations. Or... Right. Take a look here and you can see we've got a lot of phase zero projects, which are, are usually just in the idea stage. But I've got a lot of phase one and even a lot of projects in the backlog more than I more than I. I can I can bring in and I think maybe that tells me I need more people. Maybe I've now I've got a way to justify, hey, we do need to add that extra because if I had that extra resource, here's what here's how many projects I think we could do. Uh, so it gives you some capability to do some of those kinds of things. 
Mike, do you tend to, um, you know, recommend that, let's just say, a vacation scheduler on, you know, when it comes to your employees, so you can see, like, it'd be a bad time to start this project because, you know, a quarter of our workforce is off in July. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, we haven't built in that level of granularity. And and, and I got to be honest with you, I, I mean, I've worked in systems that did that. In fact, I've worked in systems that that where every single resource is scheduled at a fairly uh, definitive place, the results aren't any better than looking at it project by project and the number of projects the organization of a certain size and certain type that an organization and, and assigning points that way. It's really a it's really a good enough and and much simpler to maintain solution. Um, now. If you happen to be using a, a, a full-blown project management tool, um, we can pull the data in and, and, and you know, oftentimes they'll have some of this resource loading, the, the resource loading anyway, but we can pull that data in. But it's, it's uh, you know, quite, quite honestly, sometimes keeping it simple uh, it is because let, let's face it, it's just a guess anyway. When you, when you say somebody's gonna be working on something and doing this on August 5th, baloney <laughs> it's, it's not happening something yeah. will move one way or the other you and you there's i'm sure everybody here is managing up projects but they know that any date we put on an item in a project other than maybe the finish date is going to move throughout the whole project and and so it just you just sort of create this this uh, uh false security around it so so that's yeah. uh let me uh let me jump back to uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty much everything uh, that, that I, I wanted to show in the live demo. So now I need to switch over and show a different screen again. Uh, just a second here. So let me pause that and and just a time check, Mike. We have uh, eight minutes left for yeah, the yep. webinar. Yeah. So yeah, we can go ahead and actually jump on to questions if. Uh, if that makes sense. So what what questions do folks have? I think what questions will, um, yeah, let's open it up. Please submit your questions via chat. Um, I think it takes a second to kind of get them routed to us. So if there's a few things you want to share, Mike, why we um, yeah. get some and questions. You sure. kind of went through it, but can you just kind of do a, a high level overview of how you feel like all of this fits together? We had kind of a, a comment here of, like they like kind of what they're seeing, but they're trying, they're having a hard time seeing exactly how this all, all kind of fits together or what the, the high end message of, of what you're managing here is. Yeah. So, um, I think maybe just a second and let me pull up a slide that. And share it with you. We've got it. Right, so the, the idea here is that we're moving, you're, you're moving the organization through the whole process at the very front end, right? How are we finding those opportunities? And, and I typically recommend a, a process for, at, at this stage, a process for uh, vi uh, customer visits and end user visits, field visits, right? Whatever you wanna call it, but it's a, a a visit process where you're and visit programs where you're getting technical and commercial people out together to find unmet needs and uncover insights, right? And, and so that's the first step. Then those original, those are next are going to bring in, those are going to end up bringing in new opportunities. People are going to find opportunities, but how do we know that there are opportunities we should really be working on, that we have the capability, that we're going to make money doing it, and that we don't have better opportunities that we should we should compare them to, right? Like that ranking that I was just showing you. Uh, the next piece is the whole execution side, the deli all the deliverables that are required throughout a project, uh, and making sure that every time we get to the gate, we've got those ready and we're moving them forward, giving people the capability to see those as we move forward to see what they need to in their workflow. Remember those those numbers that show up like forecast uh, that it's the number of forecasts that I personally need to do right another product manager or 
product developer might have a different number, right? So they're, they're giving them that visibility into what's their what's the work they need to do, uh, and also giving their managers a view into into what's getting done. Right? The next stage is 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 we've developed these products, we've made these promises around what we're going to deliver, having visibility. So it's the whole area of drive. We've we've you know what are we promising that we can that we deliver and what are we and, and what are we actually getting out of it out of our from a sales standpoint and being able to to see that and see it you know every month every week whatever data comes out of ERP right we can see how are we doing against our promise and is there something that that we need to improve are we you know does the sales team are they not getting to the right kinds of customers are are we uh uh, are, are we not providing them with the right kinds of demonstration tools, whatever that might be? Uh, and, and then the last stage is of Accelerate, that's really those product life cycle concepts and, and getting, and how do you, how do you uh, take the data of really not just the products that are new, but your whole product, your, your whole product portfolio and decide which ones are performing, which ones are underperforming, and 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 make room for the new ones, right? That that uh, and, and because uh, you know, product new products are an investment, not only in terms of the development, but also in terms of the uh, uh, in terms of you know you're going to have to inventory these things and all those things that 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 uh, there's somebody in the organization that has to worry about that. That's the whole product lifecycle uh, side of things. So. So that's kind of the the overall. So yeah, let's uh, with with that. Uh, if we want to you know, jump to uh, to question any any additional questions. Yeah, I'm glad, that, one, um, I'm glad that one came in. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't see anything extra um, in here, but um, we have a pretty incredible rate of people that stood or, or that hung here with us through the whole webinar. So um, I think one thing we should ask is if, if you're interested in, in Mike's books um, and his offer, um, please uh, put your name in the chat and we'll record that list and um, and give it to Mike for distribution and, and, and communication about that. Um, Mike, would you maybe go to the screen one more time with, uh, with your uh, books on screen? Uh, yeah, let's see here. Um, there we go. Yeah, so if, uh, yeah, definitely before we close, right, I promised a, a copy of Unlock, the, the, the latest book, Unlocking Innovation Productivity. Uh, and uh, if you would uh, like to get a copy of that, just enter your name in the chat and I would be happy to send you a copy. Uh, of uh, and it'll actually help you see I think some of the underpinnings that uh, that are behind uh, Excelatrack as well. So excellent. Well, Mike, you literally wrote the book, um, and then you you know you we appreciate you using Track Via and uh, letting us be a tool in your belt to to really organize you know what your brain has absorbed uh, just in the industry over you know your your entire career and. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's a unique use case, but honestly, your use case is designed for any products, um, whether you know software or hardware or any physical widget. Um, so it, it's great to see it's it's applicable in many many markets. And um, thank you for sharing. Well, thanks for having me. And uh, and if anybody's got anybody has any follow up questions, um, you, you know we've. Uh, uh, happy to, happy to talk with you. If uh, I, I will I will say that if you're uh, if you're thinking about using Track Via to do something like this yourself, um, you know talk talk to me first because uh, uh, we give you quite a head start. So uh, there's a there's a uh, a fair bit of uh, of uh, both no code and a fair bit of programming behind this as well. So so uh, we can definitely give you a head start. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Mike, thanks again, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a great one.